we've been talking about writing and we've been talking about pretty big picture ideas and nuts and bolts stuff, but let's talk about some of the important building blocks of an academic paper, particularly writing the abstract and introduction. I want to specifically emphasize this because the abstract is often the first thing that people see of your paper. And sometimes it's the only thing that people see because they read the abstract, they they're bidding for papers that they're going to review, or uh, they're just deciding whether this paper is relevant or not. This is kind of the make or break point to make sure that during paper review, you get the right reviewers and later whether people actually read and eventually cite and use your paper ideas. Building some ideas again from uh, Derek Dreyer, he proposes a CGI model of writing an abstract. CGI stands for context, gap and innovation. So first, what is the context? What are you writing about? And so let's say that we're trying to write an abstract for everything that we're talking about in the series of vignettes. The context, writing is important. Despite the importance, it's hard to do it well. There are lots of people who don't know how to do it well. And so we're going to talk about how to become a better writer. The innovation is the part where you sell the paper, uh, the context, and the gap are where you position your paper within your field. Another problem that I see is that oftentimes the introduction just repeats the abstract, but the introduction is different from the abstract. The abstract needs to attract the right reviewers, uh, but the introduction is where once you have reviewers, you need to start them on the intellectual journey to understanding and appreciating your idea. It needs to build interest in, an, in the non-target audience, and it should have specific examples that help explain why your idea is important, why it makes sense, and why it's reasonable. You don't have space to do this in the abstract. The abstract is pretty abstract. The introduction can and should be much more concrete. A motivating example is usually a good idea in the introduction if you can figure out how to do that. Then it explains the logical structure of the paper. We'll talk about how to do that well in a bit. The introduction also can connect the paper more broadly. The abstract has the context. It's just one sentence. The introduction can connect ideas in other fields, contrast with other work. You can do that much more explicitly than in the abstract. This is just a single lecture from a course. YouTube likes to show you these videos out of order, but if you go to the course webpage linked below, you can see the lectures in the right order, and you can get resources like homeworks or suggested reading. You can also visit quanta.org if you want to learn about our systems for creating computers that can answer questions, where quanta stands for question answering is not a trivial activity. If you want to help the channel, provide a big gradient to the algorithm by liking and subscribing.